Let's have a look at some hash based signatures and in this we'll look at hash to obtain random subset, the hash to obtain random subset signature. Okay, it's part of uh, uh, quantum robust methods. So the quantum robust methods include lattice based cryptography, code based cryptography, multivariant polynomial cryptography and hash based signatures. With hash based signatures, what we have is we have a message, and then, uh, in this case, Bob will use his private key to create a hash signature. He will then pass the public key to Alice, his public key to Alice, and Alice will check the signature with the, the public key. Some of the methods or the method we're going to look at in this example are what are called one time hash based signatures. With this, we can only use the public and the private key once, and then we have to recreate them again. So some of the methods that we have uh, are the Lamport one-time signature. We have WOTS and WOTS plus, and we'll look at Hors signatures. These are one-time signatures, but we can then build them within trees to create uh, multiple, will create signatures which can be used multiple times. These include the extended Merkle signature scheme, Sphinx, and Horst. So the method that we'll have a look at is the hash to obtain random subset. With this, we initially create a number of random values and we put them into an index. This becomes our private key. So in this case, let's say we have 256 uh, values in our, in our private key, and we'll index them from 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, up to FF, which is 255. So the, the random values go into there, and let's say that we'll create a maximum value of, say, 256, so we'll take random numbers and we'll put them in. This becomes our private key. We then have some function, and in this case, what we'll do is we'll hash the, uh, the value. We'll take it as a string and then we'll hash it so it becomes some sort of signature, some sort of hashed value. Okay, so we'll take 15 and hash it. We'll take 13, hash it, 19, hash, and so on. This becomes our public key. And it will be this that will actually prove our output. So we take the message and then we hash the message in some way. This creates a byte stream. We're then going to take a certain number of bits at a time and then take the value that those bits represent and look up the table of our private key and then find the associated public key and then that will become that value. So in this case, this is the hex, the, the hashed value that we get. And now what we'll do is we'll organize it in eight bits. So we chunk it up into eight bits, and then we take the integer value and look it up in our table. So in this case, zero, 01 is the first part of the signature. So we go to this value here, and it's 30. We then go to the public key, which is the hash version of 30, and that becomes the first part of our signature. The second part in this case is 00. zero. We look up 00, zero, it's 15. We take the hash of that, and then we get the second part of the signature. And then third part is FF. So we look up that one and hash it, and that gives us our output there. Okay, so in this way, we actually create an output with our uh, public key values. On producing the public key that goes along with the message, if we can prove that we signed that, we then prove that we have the private key which can be proven against the signature. So when Alice receives this, she will take the message again and she will recreate the stream and she'll check with the, the values that come out 
and with the public and private key that we've provided, that the signature is correct. So let's have a look at some simple code for this. Okay, so we take the message, and in this case I've just used the MD5 uh, hashing function to create a 128-bit hash value. We then take each byte and it becomes an integer value. We then take 256 values for our private key and we create a random number for each of the values in an index. We then hash each of these values that we have into our public key. In this case, I've only displayed the first three characters of the hash signature for MD5, but obviously we would have a longer signature there to be able to differentiate the values. Okay, so we take this as our zero value, and then this becomes the associated value. This is the next value, and then we have that there. Now what we do is from the byte value, we'll look up 146 position. It's difficult to see from here, but we'll actually find the value that's there, and then find the associated public key value, and then that becomes our signature. OK, so we then go through each of the values in the hash one by one and then we get our output. So if we look at the code that we've used for here, so here's the private uh, key. Uh, basically, we're just taking maximum uh, a number of values, 256 in this case, and a maximum value. And then we're creating uh, a list with those values in it with, uh, with random numbers. So our private key is then our value here, which is the index values of random values. Next, what we do is that uh, we hash the private key. So in this case, we'll take each of these values, we'll create a hash of it, That's taken, that's converting it to a string, the value, and then we'll just take four characters, and now we have a list, which is a list of the public keys. So we have the private keys now, and now we have the public keys in a list from 0 to 255. After this, we'll actually create the signature. So in this case, we'll create the signature, and we'll pass in the, uh, the hashed values, these are the, 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 the byte values that, that we have from our hash signature of the message. We'll take each value at a time, we'll look up the value in our uh, private key for x, and then we'll map that to our public key. So in the output, so this is an example here, so uh, on our output, we end up with whatever values here. So in this case, uh, 146 is in here somewhere. We then look up the value that's 146 here, and that becomes that value there. So we should be able to find that value. And there it is there. Okay, we're taking 146. Just like it to be uh, this one here. And we take that value as our signature. Okay, so as I said, I've just used four characters to be able to reduce the, uh, the signature down here. But obviously in real life, we would use a longer signature such as SHA-256 to be able to create the, the hashes. Okay, so that's been an introduction into uh, hash-based signatures. Uh, have a look on the website and look at some of the other methods. Thank you.